Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lee. I will talk about schema theory in this video. Schema theory is one of the most well-known theories that represents cognitivism, but it also played a significant role in shaping constructivist learning theories. It has been developed by several scholars, but it was first introduced by a cognitive psychologist, Frederick Ballet, and further developed by some cognitive constructivists like Biaget. While information processing theory focuses on how information is processed in cognition, schema theory focuses on how knowledge is structured and stored in cognition. Okay, then what is schema? Schema is an organized structure of knowledge on a concept. This is an example of a schema on egg. It contains various information as to properties of egg and other related concepts. It contains simple knowledge about sizes and colors, and it extends to more advanced and complex concepts such as nutritional information. Then why schema is important? Research found that for information to be stored in a long-term memory so that it is retained over time, the learner should form a schema. Also, research shows that more schemata and more developed schemata you have, it is easier to learn and more efficiently perform related tasks. So an expert who has more developed schemata needs a shorter amount of time than a novice does in solving a problem or learning new things. And schema theory is about how schema is constructed, developed, and used. So it helps us better understand how learning occurs and how we can facilitate learning. Uh, first, let's see how schema is constructed. Uh, it is through experiences. All you do and experience, you are creating schemata. Richer your experiences are, the more developed your schemata are. Uh, for example, if you go to a beach, you can form a schema on the on beach. There is sand, waves, and water is salty. And physically going to a beach is more effective than just looking at a picture of it because you can smell and taste the salty water and feel the waves and sand. So you are processing information using all five senses. So your schema becomes more developed and sophisticated containing various types of information from various sources. Another way of constructing schema is connecting new information to existing schema. For example, if you are teaching a concept of erosion, you can give an example of how erosion takes place on the beach by connecting waves and sand. Then how schema is developed. There are two processes, assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation occurs when a new learning instance is consistent with the existing schema. So you can just add the instance to the schema. It is like adding a new file to a folder. Yeah, for example, uh, this is a schema of uh, animals and you think mammals live on land. And you see lions for the first time and lions live lions lives on land, so you can just add the lions under mammals. On the other hand, accommodation takes place when a new learning instance is not consistent with the existing schema, so that you have to change the property or structure of a schema to make the instance fit within the schema. In the example of mammals, you see dolphins. And dolphins are mammals that live underwater then your existing schema should be changed to make it fit. So you will have to change characteristics of mammals as well as fish. Now, how schema is used? Schema is used when comprehending verbal information. For example, when you are reading text, your cognition search for related schemata as you are reading and activate related schemata and set up expectations based on what you already have in the schema 
and constantly compare and contrast the new information with the existing knowledge. And here is an example uh, borrowed from a book by Driscoll. Okay. Uh, business had been slow since the oil crisis. Nobody seemed to want anything really elegant anymore. Here, reading the text, business may activate your schema about sales and seem elegant. You may think this may be something expensive like cars. And then you continue reading it. Uh, suddenly, the door opened and a well-dressed man entered the showroom floor. In the word showroom meets your expectation that this is a car dealership. Uh, secondly, schema is used for understanding events and guiding actions. Uh, for example, if you go to a uh, all you can eat buffet, you have certain expectations and you behave accordingly. And based on your schema on buffet, you will know where to find a place and you know uh, you are not supposed to place an order and how much you tip the server and, and so on. Mm. And lastly, schema is used when solving problems and performing tasks. Uh, just like when comprehending text, you continuously search and activate relevant schema to solve a problem or perform task at hand. And remember, uh, when you are using your schema, you are constantly um, constructing a new schema or developing existing schema. Finally, then what are the implications on teaching? Uh, first, you need to activate learners' relevant schema. This is called the schema signals, and by doing so, you are guiding your students as to what existing schema they need to activate and where to place this new information. And second, integrate new information to uh, prior knowledge so that they can utilize this knowledge when creating a new schema. And you can do that by uh, providing an analogy or explaining relationship between the new and the known information. Third, uh, highlight structure of material to be learned by giving an overview so that the learner can form backbone of schema and easily add details. Now also you can use a graphic organizer this is most effective when a concept has a clear cut structure where you have definite coordinate and subordinate concepts such as the concept uh, mammals. Um, finally, you can engage the learner in mindful learning activities that they can actively use their schema such as solving a problem or performing task so that uh, they can continuously develop them. I uh, hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.